it's a pleasure to introduce our first uh, talk in this afternoon, <laughs> in our last day of the conference, of our conference. So our speaker will be Adriano da Silva, professor of the uh, University of Campinas, Unicamp, and also uh, was former PhD of San Martin and the Fritz Colonials, right? And the Adriano is a young and, and the excellent mathematician and the work in linear system on Lie group and he give several good contributions in this direction. And the, now he will talk about linear system on homogeneous space of two-dimensional Lie group. Adriano, thank you for accepting our invitation and the, go ahead. Okay, Alexandre, uh, I will be I will be in another window, so I will not see people. So if you have any question, just please comment or something, because I can't see. So uh, thank you for the the warm introduction. Thank you, Alexandre. And thank you all for being here and the the organizers also that trusted me with, with this uh, nice task, because that was a, a planner from Victor, and Victor had some changes in his schedule. So he, he asked me to be here, and the, the organizers accepted. So I'll try to, to answer to this trust. It's really nice. And what I will be talking about is a, is a work that uh, I was discussing first with, with Victor at the beginning, and then we, we, we like, we, we found a kind of work, try to uh, try to understand what happens in low, low dimensional case of homogeneous space. And then we we brought uh, Professor Maria Torriblanca from Arequipa to work with us. And at the beginning, we, we, we thought that this work would be something like really, really smooth to do because the idea was that the, the things would be quite similar to what happens in, in groups, in, in the case of the two-dimensional group in general, okay? Uh, but as we will comment in this, in this presentation, we'll see that things change a little bit when you go to homogeneous space, okay? That, that's, not necessary, not, that's not really a surprise uh, when you think in, in semi-simple groups, we, we already knew that things that, that like that could uh, could happen because usually, for instance, when you get uh, homogeneous space, uh, flag manifolds, you have that uh, in some flags, you have that linear system and invariant system, they coincide. So the behavior, the dyna dynamical behavior will be the same. So, and this for invariant system, Professor Samartin has a, a huge amount of results with collaborators also that studies the system. So they are already well studied. And what we wanted was to see what happens mainly in the solvable case, yes? And then we, we proposed this work. And then uh, the idea is basically here to, to give sort of a, a motivation. I'm, I'm not really of the motivational motivation type. I, I do things more because of the math behind it. But I, I'll try to comment a little bit, give some motivations. And then some standard standard definitions of a linear control system, and then what happens in the two-dimensional case, and uh, some comparison between the two-dimensional case in the group and on the homogeneous space. Okay, so basically, uh, for me, the motivation to to study linear control systems basically uh, purely mathematical. It's a nice object that relates quite well with the with the the geometrical features of a Lie group and it's also a natural uh, generalization of the well-known linear system and this linear system on our end they have uh, lots of applica application you have uh, physical problems that are modeled in this kind of setup okay so they have in fact applications in general and linear control system only groups they appear basically as generalization of this kind of system okay it appeared first for matrix groups by marcus and then 
later for generally groups. And the, the other main motivation that happens here is basically the equivalence theorem of uh, Philip John that basically says that if you have uh, a contra-affine system, a system that is given basically by one drift and the sum of control vectors on a connected manifold with some uh, properties, strong properties, but we have a lot of example with this kind of proper system with this kind of properties. So basically uh, any such system that is transitive and the vector fields that is involved, that are involved, they are complete and the Lie algebra generate is a finite one then this kind of system is diffeomorphic to a linear control system on a Lie group or on a homogeneous space. And in the, in this, uh, with this idea, well, with this idea, we, we basically use this kind of motivation to understand what happens on the Lie group because on Lie groups, you have lots of structures, okay? And then mainly uh, the results that we have up to this, uh, this this one that I will show here was for Lie groups. But uh, a basic uh, linear control system on a given homogeneous space is uh, also a contrafine system of this form. So it's a drift. And then you have uh, vectors here. Here should be UY. We have uh, control vectors, what we call. That's basically the vectors that made some sort of perturbation in your dynamical system. And here we will choose uh, the functions u that has coordinates u i here as as basically piecewise constant uh, functions for this kind of work. Okay. So and your vectors here they are just small vectors. And the you say that such system on a homogeneous space it is a linear control system if you have that this the the drift is conjugated by the canonical projection to a linear vector field and all the vectors the control vectors here they are conjugated to uh to left invariant vector fields okay basically that and when you do that you your the class of linear control systems uh, they 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 uh, only groups they are kind of restricted but when you go to homogeneous space you you get a uh, much more linear system and so the general generality of this kind of systems uh, goes up like exponentially and just to remember here what's a linear vector field we we are commented on that uh, a linear vector field is basically a vector field uh, that's complete and its flow is basically a one parameter one parameter subgroup of automorphisms, okay? So the idea was, because of this motivation that I commented before, was to understand what happens with this kind of system. Mainly because when you, you consider the trivial case, the case where your age is, the, is just the identity element of your group, we have really nice properties that mimic what happens in the abelian case, okay? So mainly, under some uh, some uh, conditions, some condition of existence of control sets, mainly what we have is that all the topological and algeb algebraic conditions of this oh, algebraic, sorry, uh, when under some topological or algebraic condition, we have the existence of this control system, control set. And it's a control set that con contains the identity element in its interior. And many of its properties, topological properties and uh, uni uniqueness properties and so on, they are uh, related with a linear map that you can associate it to the drift reverse system. Okay, so problems like uh, controllability, the case where, oh, sorry, here should be C. Uh, when your control set C is exactly the whole group, uh controllability here in the sense that we can join any two points okay so you you get two points of your state system of your group and you can join by a solution positive time and then this property of controllability and boundedness of these control sets 
uh, invariance in positive and negative time, and even un uniqueness, they are determined by this matrix I, matrix associated to the drift, and mainly associated with the eigenvalues of this matrix, okay? Uh, in order to illustrate that, let, let's see some examples, okay? So some simple examples, if you consider a solvable Lie group on, uh, here should be R plus, I have lots of typos here. So it should be R plus, when you consider the half plane, half plane, so the positive X, uh, X axis with the uh, Y axis, and then you define this kind of product here, otherwise you would have an exponential. So when you consider this kind of uh, product here, you have that it's basically the solvable Lie group with dimension two. And for this kind of group, what we do is we can explicitly calculate the linear vector field, uh, left invariant vectors fields. And we have also this is the topological bar, uh, bar algebraic condition that I said before. So mainly is the Lie algebra condition, just saying that your vectors, they generate the whole uh, Lie algebra here that's involved. And what you have here is that under, under this, like under this Lie algebra run condition, uh, a, a, an arbitrary linear vector field has this uh, expression in coordinates, okay? And you can solve it and the associated linear map that I said, it's the derivation of the Lie algebra and it's given basic, basically by this matrix here that's intrinsically connected with the uh, linear vector field here, so A and B. Just remember, just to emphasize, here should be our plus, okay? Because our plus, the identity element is one. So this uh, linear vector field has a one zero, that's the identity element here as singular point, okay? So, and then you have this derivation and what happens is uh, you have full controllability, meaning that the solutions of this system here, when you concatenate with this constant I, and here omega is just a, an interval of the real line. When you concatenate solutions of the system, you can get from uh, one point to any other that you choose, okay? And that's a work that uh, this, this result was already uh, showed by uh, Philippe and that in their work. And we, what we did in a, a similar work for control, uh, control systems on the group was to analyze what happens with the, the control set when you don't have controllability. So if B, if B here is not zero, not necessarily here, you, you do not have controllability. And what you have is exactly one unbounded control set and it has no empty interior and contain the identity element. So basically uh, these are the possible control sets. So remember that we are on the R, R plus time R. So here what happens, uh, here is the identity element and what you have is this kind of cones here, okay? And this is, this is something interesting that I should comment because it will appear later. Uh, this condition here, B, does not belong into alpha omega. Remember that omega is basically the control range, is where you get your, your controls to concatenate. And alpha here is some, some, some uh, real number that's associated to the left invariant vector field, and B is exactly the eigenvalue of the matrix uh, associated with the linear vector field. Okay, so here you have a relationship saying that when this eigenvalue does not belong to uh, alpha times your range, you have this kind of control set. And when it goes inside your, your range multiplied by this alpha here, it explodes. So, and you actually can see this kind of continuity. You have sort of a bifurcation point that is given by B alpha minus one. So your control set will grow and grow and then when it, enters when we to he touch just b alpha touch the omega b alpha minus one touch omega it explodes and then you get also a cone but this complete cone here okay and we have also a nice uh a nice uh expression for the solutions the behavior is not 
we, we can explicitly, explicitly give the, the solutions, but you can see that they have this sort of behavior here. They are, the ones that are outside the control set, they are attracted to the control set, okay? That, it's a uh, expected behavior. So, and then you have a, a second one, a second example, which is the first one will be more uh, important. That's why I expended more time on it. And the second one's basically uh, an example on the uh, group of the proper motions of R2. You get this kind of operation here where R theta here is just the rotation uh, counterclockwise by the angle theta. And then you can also uh, expi explicitly give the, the linear vector field. So an expression for the linear vector field is this one. And the left invariant also has this expression here. Basically, the first component is free. You just rotate the second one. And this A and W here, they are the values that you get when you apply Y at the identity element here, okay? So, you have a uh, general expression for this kind of system also, okay? And you can also uh, analyze the, the behavior of this kind of system. The, the linear map that I said, the derivation associated has this uh, form here, okay? Remember that here is a two by two matrix, so it's a, a column vector of two lines and one column, sorry. And you have the controllability of this kind of system, it is uh, it's possible to analyze at least what we did first was for the, the unbounded case, when you consider, for instance, omega equals to r. Uh, but the point is that the only controllability that you ha have here, so you, you can just go from one point to another by solution positive time, if you necessarily have that this matrix A has a pair of pure uh, imaginary eigenvalues. Okay, so again, it's connected with the eigenvalues of this derivation that you have. And it's interesting here because uh, in order to show that the other case we, we do not have controllability, you induce a sort of a fine system on R2, and then you can see in fact that you do not have controllability. It's quite interesting, but it's a topic for the next uh, talk. So, and then the, the natural question here is, uh, can, can we pass some, at least some of these properties for the, linear control system on the on a general homogeneous space, uh, at least for the solvable case. As I said, the se semi-simple case we extend a little bit, but we have, a, a, uh, there is a lot of results that relate uh, invariant control system with linear control system, and then you already know that uh, how is the behavior of this system, at least on homogeneous, at least on some homogeneous space. And what we expected was, uh, can we in fact uh, get, at least in the solvable case, some of the results, for instance, um, uh, un uniqueness of this control set or boundedness of this control set. Boundedness would be something more uh, like a, fi a fairy tale. Uh, we, we already knew that would not happen necessarily, but that was the idea, to see if some of the properties goes uh, to the homogeneous space, okay? So, and then in order to do that, what we did in this work with Professor Ayala and Professor Torre Blanca was basically to consider the homogeneous space of the two-dimensional solvable group. Here, I will use another inter interpretation that's not the health plane, okay? Uh, the relationship between the health plane and this one is just given by you get G and exponentiate the first component. So you get the same thing. And actually we will uh, compare both of this, uh, this case later. So just consider this here because it's easier to understand, uh, to work with. And then you put this operation on this solvable group with this interpretation. And then you have the algebra that is identified with the set of left invariant vector fields here. And what you have is you can also uh, obtain left and right or left and invariant vector fields and linear 
vector fields uh, in a quite easier way. You can see that here, as I said, you identify when you go from this interpretation to the interpretation of the half plane. What you do is you exponentiate the first component. So basically, that's exactly the same expression that you have for a linear vector field on the half plane. Okay, uh, but here you you lose a multiplication of the first component also. So and then you have also that you can uh, you can express the the flow of a, li a linear vector field uh, explicitly explicitly, and that will be actually important for our purposes. So uh, what was the idea? We, we mainly consider an arbitrary uh, subgroup of G and then consider a one uh, uh, LCS, a linear control system on the homogeneous space with just one control vector. Okay, because in the two case, if they are, uh, if they would be uh, in linear independent you usually have controllability here, so it wasn't interesting. And then just consider this kind of system and where you choose your omega as a compact interval containing the identity. And the first result that we, we use here from, from, from uh, Philip Juan was basically, it's a, it's a quite simple result, but it, 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 it allowed allows us to classify actually all the linear control system on the homogeneous space of this two-dimensional group. It basically says that in order to have, because uh, left invariant vector fields will pass um, directly for the homogeneous space, but for the, the linear vector fields, they not necessarily induce well-defined vector fields on the homogeneous space. And by a, by a, a, a general result from Professor Juan, here what you have is that you have this well-defined uh, vector field that is induced by the canonical projection uh, from a linear vector field if you have that the flow of automorphisms associated with the linear vector field um, fix the subgroup age, let the subgroup age invariant. Okay, so that's a, a, a simple result, but for, two, for the two dimensional case, uh, it, it will be enough to classify the possible uh, LCS so homogeneous space. Okay, so thinking of that, our first step was mainly to, to look at all first, at all possible subgroups that you have in your group G that they are invariant by continuous flow of, of automorphisms, and then you just uh, obtain uh, diffeomorphisms between an arbitrary one given and one of the subgroups that you classified. Okay, so what what you do have is that since the dimension is low, it's quite easy to to prove that up to isomorphisms, and this part of isomorphism is actually quite important. Uh, any subgroup age of your two-dimensional solubility group here, it's given by the following form. And it's important to, to note here that we do not ask for your subgroup age to be connected necessarily, okay? So if you have a dimension zero subgroup, what you have is that basically up to isomorphism, you have that age is the zero times the integers here, uh, or it's a multiple of the integers in the first component, at this c times zero for some uh, real number c that we will assume to be non-zero. Otherwise, we had the usual system on the group G. And if you have dimension one, what you have is uh, here. Sorry, here is not uh, z. Here should be r times zero, okay, or uh, z c times r. Okay, and this, this age here, Zc times R, it's a normal subgroup. So when you when you consider the homogeneous space, we'll get we we'll still get a lead group. So it's still a linear control system on a lead group. So and the consequence of looking at these subgroups here is if you if we have, if you know, you, see, you can see that up to isomorphisms we have just four subgroups and what we 
what we see later is that these four subgroups, this up to isomorphism part here, it's what mainly says that we just need to consider induced system for these four subgroups. Why? Because it's a quite easy uh, computation here that if you have uh, any automorphism of your group G, and that's for generally groups and con uh, closed subgroups that are related with each other by the map F, and then you can construct a map F bar here that's in fact a diffeomorphism between uh, age one, um, a, oh, the quotient space of G by age one and the quotient space of G by age two, okay? And this map is, makes this diagram commuta uh, commutates and it's a diffeomorphism. And since it's a diffeomorphism, if you have a system on G, on the homogeneous space on the right or on the left, doesn't really matter because the diffeomorphism, you can induce a second uh, linear control system on the homogeneous space that you want. So meaning that if you have an initial control, linear control system here or on age one time, on, on G by age one, you can consider the automorphism here in G that takes age one in one of the four subgroups that you have before previously. And then you, cre you create this map, this map F bar, and then you induce a linear control system here on G by A2 that is equivalent by diffeomorphism to the first one initial, meaning that all the dynamical properties that you have on this uh, G by A2 here, on the SS here, on G by A2, they are the same of your initial SS. So that the simple diagram and the simple calculation shows that we what you need to do is only to look at linear control systems that are induced on quotient space of g by these four subgroups here okay so that was the first uh thing that we noticed and that's that's also uh true in general so in general you would basically if you can classify the possible subgroups so in, in some classes by automorphism and then you just need to look at these classes, okay? It's the same diagram. So, uh, and then what we uh, what we did uh, in, in the sequence was to look basically at the linear vector fields whose flows let all of these subgroups invariants, because in order to have a well-defined uh, group on the quotient space, you need to show that those subgroups, they are invariant. So when you look at that, what you get, it's a, a, an expression of the linear vector fields. And that also reduces reduce your work to just uh, four kinds of systems. So uh, in this case, what you have is this kind of system. You see here, you don't have the part B, okay? The B is related with the eigenvalue of the derivation. So you don't have it here. Uh, when you consider uh, both of this one, the one that I said that was not Z, but R here, and the ZC times R, so the discrete one and the one dimensional one, uh, it's different. What you have here is just the linear part. So you don't have this second part here. And this, this third uh, type here is always invariant. And that's natural because on the first component, uh, linear vector field basically fixates the first component. Okay, so then using these results, now what, I, what, we, what we could get was basically that any linear control system on the homogeneous space of the two-dimensional solvable group was the following. So when you consider this subgroup, what you have is a, it's a control system on R or on uh, S1. Uh, here, basically, T, TC is the, to, to the, the, is the torus R by ZC, okay? So here is basically they are all the same uh, system, just change a little bit the torus. And when I put zero here, just mean the real line. So you obtain this system without drift, okay? 
uh, when you consider this kind of group here, you have uh, this system, and that's basically a linear system on R, okay? So, and that's that's also something quite interesting because what do you, you obtain? It's a linear system uh, on R, as seen as an abelian group, and here the homogeneous space is not necessarily a Lie group, okay? So here is, although that's a linear system, you are not considering the product. Uh, that you would have induced here. So it's just because you get also when the Euclidean space, when you consider the homogeneous space, and then you still get the definition of, uh, of a linear control system on the Euclidean case, okay? And then when you consider just uh, the discrete cases where your subgroup are zero dimensional, the, those one, uh, they are the most interesting. Uh, that that appears here in this work. So when you consider zero times Z, uh, you get here, what you get here, uh, it's important to note also that H is not a subgroup. Remember that you have uh, the action of your, oh, sorry, this is, oh, in this case, the subgroup, sorry. It's, no, it's not a subgroup, sorry. You have a, one exponential that appears here. But doesn't matter what you get is that is that uh, as, cylinder here, an, an horizontal cylinder that you can identify with this horizontal cylinder. And in the first component in R, we still have this um, Z dot is U alpha. It's similar to the first system. And in the second one, we have the second term that will, uh, will work on the S1 part that you have, okay? And the last one, is also a system that is, uh, is, can be identified as a system on a, on a silent cylinder, but it's a vertical one, okay? So here, the part U alpha is on the uh, S1 part, and then here you have this second uh, part here that works on the, on the X, oh, sorry, on the axis here, okay? So, and then once we have all of this first system, okay, so the first test was just to see and classify uh, the possible ones. Up to here, things were normal, was to, what we wanted to see was the problem of controllability and control sets of this kind of system and try to see if something remains when you go from, uh, from G to the homogeneous space, okay? So the first system is quite uh, simple to understand. Because remember that the, the first system is just, uh, it's a system or on a S1 or on the real line that is given by Z dot equals to U alpha. So meaning that the solutions are basically uh, lines starting on some point of the real line when you have the real line. So that goes to the right or to the left, depending on the sign of the contour that you get. If we assume that alpha is not zero, Okay, so it's controllable if and only if your alpha is not zero. Uh, the second one, uh, if the system, remember that the second one is also, let me just go back here. So the first one is this one. The second one is this linear system. So it's linear system on R, and it's also uh, well known what happens there. So what happens is if your B is zero, the system is controllable under this condition that bet's not zero. And if your bet, uh, if your B is not zero, and then you have exactly one control set, and this control set is just a closed one given by that, if your B is negative, or an open one that's given by that if your B is positive, okay? So we have one control set that contains the identity here. That's also something that was expected. Uh, and the, in the horizontal case, so ju just to, to comment on this condition, A alpha uh, not zero, beta not zero, or beta not zero, and alpha not zero here, they are uh, related with the Lie algebra on condition, okay? They are not a uh, condition that just appears. They are basically the Lie algebra on condition for the projective system. So uh, in this case, on the horizontal cylinder, uh, you have controllability if and only if A alpha is not zero. 
and that happens that's quite also quite easy to see because when you when you look at solutions starting for uh, solutions for your uh, constant control equals to zero the solutions remains on the on some 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 uh, some circle that is starting your cylinder and when you change your u since u alpha is not zero here oh since alpha is not zero when you consider u alpha since it changes uh, sign you can go uh, on the axis here to plus and minus infinity and of course you have to take some care on the on the circle that are projection to the identity element but doesn't really matter because the points that you can by the Lie algebra and conditions this her the circle is not so important so basically what you do is something like this so any two points you just uh, start here and then you just go from the solution blue here to the respective circle that you want and then you just rotate and you switch off your control to the control zero it just uh, rotates uh, uh, until you encounter the point, the point that you want okay so uh, the basic idea is that and the fourth system that was uh, a surprise for us and, and that that was uh, something that we we wasn't expecting so again you have the, the algebra run condition here okay and the point is that when you have now this kind of condition that appeared in the solvable case that relate the eigenvalue of your derivation and left invariant oh, the, the left invariant vector and the control range. So meaning that when you have this B that if it's not inside, it's outside. Remember that omega is a closed uh, interval here. So if B is outside your set uh, alpha omega, and then you still have a unique control set that you had for the solvable case, remember, but you you have that this control set's bounded. Okay, so okay, so here it, it, it was already something different. Of course, when you we go to homogeneous space that you are compatifying uh, one direction, so that's not something that's really uh, special, but it still was something that was different. We, we, were, we were expecting still one unbounded control set that goes uh, to somewhere that we, we didn't know at the time. Uh, and then you have here, you have two more cases, and that's where it really dif differs from the, the case, the two-dimensional case on the Lie group. Uh, the first one is when you consider B on your boundary of your of omega here, okay? So when you consider B on this boundary, what you have is that this, this system here induced on the homogeneous space, the vertical cylinder, it admits also a unique unbounded control set now. It is still a unique control set, but now it is unbounded. So that, that was basically what we were expecting in this case. And then you have the case where that belongs to the interior or of alpha omega and at first we look at that and we we had some solutions and we we couldn't say what happens with the like we, we could we could understand the behavior on the group but on the homogeneous space it was kind of strange and like when you analyze a little bit more what you get is that when you consider b and it's like if a range is big enough such that b it's inside the interior of, of alpha gamma, alpha omega, you you obtain a new control set. So, and it's not only a new control set; it's a new control set with no empty interior. Okay, and that's something. So that that's are basically the the like the pictures that represent the control set. So here is when your B is outside alpha omega. Here is, is the unbounded one, and here is the second one that appears here, okay? And the, the first thing that came to, to our, our head was, so is there some relationship? Uh, what, what's happening here, okay? Because if you, if you remember, I don't know, so I'll, I'll have to go a lot of slides back, but if you remember the behavior uh, of your 
of your solutions outside the control set. What happens is that you go from, from one given point, you go, you are attracted to the control set. Okay, so meaning that, uh, so here is basically a relationship between uh, the interpretation of your uh, subgroup S with the positive of the half plane and the group G that we were working in this, in this case, that's basically given by logarithm here. So meaning that uh, basically the LCS that you have on the homogeneous space can be seen as projection of a linear control system on the group S. Uh, the one of the first example, okay? So why that? Because uh, if you have that B is outside, is not is outside of uh, alpha omega, okay? It's not the bond there, it's outside. And then what happens that the control set on the L says it is exactly projected to the control set on this, uh, on this homogeneous space, the last case. Okay, the, the, the other case, they were quite normal because you have also controllability in the case, the case that B is zero, so what's something expect, uh, expected? But this case here, it appeared a second one, okay? So uh, when your range is small enough, okay, so that does not contains B, uh, alpha minus one, and then you still have that you can project your control set from the LSS to the control set on the homogeneous space, okay? but the, the question was what happens with B inside the interior of alpha omega? Why do we get a second control set? And the question why is because the solutions that started outside your control set, they went uh, towards your control set on the group level. So what's happening when you project from the group to the homogeneous space? And that, that's a, a, quite, uh, a quite nice uh, understanding of what's happening is basically because uh, the canonical map here, when we project uh, from S to your uh, homogeneous space here, what's happening is that this map, uh, this canonical projection here, takes all the rays that starts uh, at zero, okay? So all the rays that are uh, coming from the, the origin here on your half plane, and it takes it on a circle that has height A. So meaning that this A here is just the tangent of the angle that you have from this ray. So it can go to, the, the tangent can go to plus infinity to minus infinity. So meaning that all the rays even though the rays start in here at the, all of them start at the origin, when you get rays that are quite close to the y-axis here, they are projected to minus infinity on your cylinder. And that's exactly how you can uh, go down your uh, cylinder. So you cannot go down in your group, but you certainly can go down in the cylinder because you can cross all of this ray. And that's a, a, a quite beautiful geometry. So, but that just says that the solutions here, so the, the things that we, we, we got from this interpretation was basically, so the first one, the first uh, thing that we, I think my time is up. So the first thing that we got from this relationship between two-dimensional uh, LCS on the solve, or two-dimensional LCS on uh, the group and the two-dimensional LCS on the homogeneous space was that there's a nice relationship between uh, the eigenvalue of your, of your derivation B, uh, your range alpha and uh, this alpha, or your range omega and this alpha here that's related to the control vector. So a natural question is, is that uh, usually uh, true in general? Uh, does, of course, the, the eigenvalues, they, they are related somehow with the behavior of the solution, but uh, do we have a nice relationship between the eigenvalues, the control vectors, and the range of your system in order to assure the quantity of the uh, control set or even 
and the topological property of your control sets. So, and what, what we, we are looking now is how to generalize this relationship between B, alpha, and omega, and of course, how to obtain topological properties of control sets, for instance, uh, certainly, if you, if you project your control set, you will project inside a control set, uh, a control set on the homogeneous space. And since we are looking at the control set with the identity element in its interior, it will project your uh, central component, the, the, the component associated to the zero eigenvalues, inside the control set on the, on the homogeneous space. And that meaning that one necessary condition is that for, for, for you to have bounded control sets on your projective system is basically that the projection of your uh, central component should be bounded. Okay, so that's, that's a, a, a necessary condition, but certainly not a sufficient one as the example showed, because we can project on the bounded case and you use oh, on the, oh, you can project and have a bounded one because in this case they're just a circle by the origin but it still can have unbounded control sets. And this unboundedness is related with this more uh, refined condition between the eigenvalues, the control vectors, and the range. And the second one is, uh, can we calculate the number of these possible control sets? So in the sense that if we still, uh, we still have uh, small control sets, oh, sorry, small control ranges, uh, we still have the same property, meaning that you can still project exactly your control set on the group to your control set on the homogeneous space. So that's a question that uh, needed to be answered just because of one simple example. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, here is some reference that we use: some papers on one dimensional, some classical book on Collins and Kleeman, and some paper of Professor John. Okay. Oh, let's thanks, Adriano. So, questions, comments? There's Samartin, then after Rafael. Samartin, please. <clears throat> Can I speak? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now my question is, uh, if you, if are there uh, subgroups such that uh, controllability at the level, at the group level? implies is equivalent to controllability at the homogeneous space level did you find some some cases so well, maybe, you may so you, hmm? you may if you if you may if you have uh, uh if you can join two points in a, in a specific subgroup and then you have controllability on the homogeneous space no, no, I mean, uh, uh -huh. you look at uh, uh, the, the linear system on the group, on uh -huh. the group space and the homogeneous space uh, uh, linear system. One is projected into the other. So my question is, are there subgroups to, to write down the homogeneous space such that controllability on both levels are equivalent? Of course, controllability on the group level implies controllability on the homogeneous space. Uh, I'm asking if are there subgroups where the, the converse is true? Yes, yes. Um, the, the point is always the same. So we have this, when you ask for this uh, strong uh, topological condition that your identity element is contained in the interior of the control set, uh, that implies automatically that your the whole subgroup G0, that's basically, you can think of the subgroup G0 associated to uh, periodic orbs of your, of your linear system, linear, con sorry, linear vector field. So when you are looking at the abelian case, your subgroup G0 is basically the, the generalized eigenspace Associate the sum of generalizing eigenspace associated to the 
uh, pure imaginary eigenvalues of your matrix A. So we always have that this kind of subgroup will be contained under this strong topological condition. The subgroup will be contained inside of the or in the interior of the control set, meaning that if you consider the homogeneous space by this subgroup, the controllability will be equivalent because you already have controllability on this subgroup. And that's actually uh, something that happens even when you don't have this strong controllability property. In this, uh, in this example of the three-dimensional subgroups, we, we worked with all uh, two-dimensional subgroups on solvable uh, Lie groups. And what we have there is that several cases, when you consider the homogeneous space of the group by this, this group of uh, periodic corps or singularity of your drift, when you consider the quotient uh, of the group by this subgroup, and you have controllability, on the homogeneous space, uh, in many times you have controllability over also. So that, that's the, the subgroup that you want to look when considering quotient space. But the problem is, is the other ones. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rafael? Um, hi, hi, Adriano. Uh, 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 about the second example uh, you show us, that is, that is not a two-dimensional group, we start to, well, well you show the example. Um, I see a uh, uh, certain resemblance uh, with the first example the in the upper the in the operation of the group and i i think uh, i think you myself here it's if uh, there there are um, generalization of the uh, groups with uh, this of this kind of operation uh, in first uh, you multiply by a number, a real number, in the second, uh, you, you put, uh, multiplicate by a rotation, rotation matrix, uh, rotation matrix was, was you, so you know some kinds of generalization uh, of it, this, this kind of uh, groups for high dimension. Yes, the, the, those are basically uh, same direct product. When you you get you can consider a, a new potent uh, an n dimensional new potent Lie group. Okay, oh, so Lie algebra, and then you just consider derivation, and then you consider uh, the the map that associated to it real number at t times this derivation so that gives gives rise to a, a like um r times n subgroups the same direct product of r and this new potently group and they have the same behavior so the operations are are, are quite similar to that actually uh, the this is not uh, that's actually not the it's actually almost the same. So when we started, we started with this kind of subgroups here. And here is, in fact, the exponential of a, a rotation matrix. And most of the, the subgroups in the three-dimensional case that are solvable, they are given by this same direct product. Okay, You have some that are not. No, all of them are. Uh, but the point is that some, uh, all of the simple connected one, they are given by the same direct product. And then we have exactly this expression. But if you look at higher dimension do, and do this kind of uh, same direct product that I commented, you see, we, still, we still have 
uh, some similar behavior of the linear vector field and the left invariant one. The problem will be that when you put uh, brackets non-trivial on the nilpotent part, because here the nilpotent part is just R2, that's a billion. When you put non-trivial brackets there, things get a little bit more complicated, much more complicated. But yes, that, that's a quite normal set group. This kind of same direct product is quite normal. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, more questions, comments? So that's thanks to Adriano. Thank you very much, Adriano. Nice talk. Uh, thank you all. Thank you.